أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أغلق والخاتم لما سبق ناصر الحق بالحق والهادي إلى صراطك المستقيم وعلى آله حق قدره ومقداره العظيم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد صلاة تنجينا بها من جميع الأهوال والآفات وتقضي لنا بها جميع الحاجات وتطهرنا بها من جميع السيئات وترفعنا بها عندك أعلى الدرجات وتبلغنا بها أقصى الغايات من جميع الخيرات في الحياة وبعد الممات السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته جزاكم الله خيرا إمام شاهد for speaking to us about the whispers of the shaytan جزاكم الله خيرا to all of you for coming here and trying your best to benefit and learn and take this ultimately so that you can inshallah uh, strengthen your relationship with God and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which is what we want at the end of the day Barakallahu Fikum for to our moderator for reminding us of our beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam what a beautiful way to start when the name of the Messenger Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam is wa mentioned to say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam I was asked to speak about the topic will Allah forgive me and please bear with me today because I am going to take it in a different direction v related but it's a very interesting question because if I were to put this question in chat GBT which I did this morning by the way just just to see what it spat out it actually produced like an excellent <laughs> an excellent lecture it says you know the Islamic faith says a B and C about the nature of God if you do these sins but if you have it was really really nice but you know that question actually and this is where we need to wear our thinking caps are thinking kufis and thinking hijabs right now I'm gonna be a bit philosophical that question speaks more to our nature than it does to Allah's nature the question will Allah forgive me which is what the sub subtitle is of the session speaks more to us to our conception of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of God Almighty than it does to who Allah is because would anyone here intellectually rationally from an information perspective. Does anyone here say that, will Allah forgive you? Is Allah forgiving? Well, if we don't have certainty on this, we got issues, people. Is Allah merciful? No, come on. Allah salli ala sinna nabi. Why would anyone here? Yes, with conviction. Is Allah forgiving? Yes. Oh, Allahu Akbar, Allah, alhamdulillah. It's, it's, a clear, it's a clear question. But what's really interesting is why do we ask that question if we already have that at least rational certainty let's say like from an intellectual perspective we're certain of that there is a verse in the quran that i think speaks to this imam al-qurtubi narrates this in his commentary of uh this verse and he says that a group of the greatest companions sayyidina abu bakr siddiq umar uthman and ali these four in specific they gathered one day having a conversation about what is the verse that brings the most hope in a person's heart what, what verse brings the most hope in a person's heart it's a long narration and because of time I'll just mention what Sayyidina Abu Bakr himself said he said the verse that brings the most hope to the heart is where God says in this verse is in Surah Al-Isra he says uh, I had more prepared about this verse, but I'll just mention the, the zibda, the meat and potatoes here. Allah says, say, everyone acts according to their own disposition. Everyone acts according to their own disposition. And your, load, your Lord is most knowledgeable as to who is most rightly, rightly guided. Sayyidina Abu Bakr took the first half of the verse. And he said, He said, the essence of God is forgiveness. And the essence of the human being, his natural disposition. The, the scholars say, Like what you're, what you're naturally disposed to. He said, what you're naturally disposed to is rebellion, disobedience. And that's because as Imam Shahid spoke of the whispers of the shaitan, a lot of what he mentioned could be the shaitan, 
But more than often, it's actually our own lower nafs, our own lower self. Our own lower, Allah created every human being with a nafs, with a lower self. And that lower self, like, amara bisu, it commands evil, it tells you do this, it tells you do that. And without a refined, spiritual, uh, uh, transparent, malleable heart, and a strong, rational faculty to block it, we can fall victim to that, right? Part of the whispers of the shaitan, and you know what's a really good book? Sorry, this is a tangent. There's a book called The Screwtape Letters by C.S. Lewis. Has anyone read this? I wish like there's a Muslim version of it, because it's, it's, it's like, if, if you would do the inverse of this book, it seems like it's Imam al-Ghazali. But anyway, this book's The Screwtape Letters, C.S. Lewis, the Chronicles of Narnia guy, but he was a great Christian apologist. He, it's a fictional account of two, like the, 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 the minister of the shayateen writing letters to his murid, to like his student. And he's guiding his student, the other shaytan, his minion, as to how to misguide what he calls the patient. One of the things he says, which is true in our tradition as well, is make them think of religion as a utility, in the sense that I, um, I, I use religion, I use Islam either for, patriot, for some patriotic region, patriotic reason, or for something else. But as soon as that utility is done, Islam is no longer relevant. Meaning Islam becomes no longer about Allah, but it becomes about me. It becomes about something I want to accomplish. And when we ask the question, will Allah forgive me? It's almost as though we're dealing with Allah from my perspective, not from God's perspective. And the Messenger of God warns us of this in the Hadith Qudsi, fi Bukhari wa Muslim, in which the Messenger of God says, that Allah says, "Ana inda dhanni abdi bi." I am as my slaves thinks. Of, I am as my slave thinks of me. Imam Ibn Hajar, in his commentary on this, the scholars in their commentary on this, they say that what this means is if you think God is forgiving, that forgiveness will be manifested on you. If you think God re will return to you in repentance, that will be manifested. If you think God is merciful, that's what you will experience in your life. It doesn't change the essence of Allah, but it's what my relationship will be based off of when I... When I, when I when I, when I think of God in that way, and vice versa. In if I have evil thoughts and uh, conceptions of God, then that's what I will kind of see manifested in my own life. It's similar to, it's a relationship at the end of the day. Your relationship with God is a relationship. And just like other relationships, you know that book, The Five Love Languages? If any of you are about to get married, read it. If you're married and you haven't read it, read it. It's a really good book. It's very well known, Gary Chapman. And one of the things he mentions is that one of the biggest problems with spouses is that they speak to each other in their own language without understanding what moves or drives the other person. So he says, like, me, for example, uh, and my wife is here, I have to be careful, but <laughs> me, <laughs> me, for example, maybe um, time is something I need. And so because I want that, I start giving it to who? My spouse. But maybe my spouse doesn't need time. This is a hypothetical, well, it's a hypothetical example. <laughs> maybe my spouse doesn't need time. Maybe she needs something else. I need to speak to my spouse in her language. Your relationship with God is the same way. When you speak to Allah, when you think of Allah, you think of on His terms, not on your terms. It's not what can Allah do for you. It's not can Allah, it's none of that. You know, there's an amazing statement by Mawlai al-Arabi al-Darqawi, one of the, you know, saintly scholars of Morocco. And he says, قَالَ لِي بَعْضُ الْإِخْوَانِ In his rasail, in his letters. He says, my students, they wrote to me and they said, لَسْتُ بِشَيْءٍ I am nothing. My students wrote to me and they said, I am nothing. You know, his students, now they want to flex their muscles of how humble they are. They're saying, I am nothing. So he said, لا تقل لست بشيء ولا تقل أنا شيء ولا تقل خصني شيء He said, don't say I am something. Don't say I am nothing. Don't say I need something. Don't say I need nothing. قل الله ترى عجبا He said, say Allah, you will see wonders. Because it's about him at the end of the day, subhana. So when we ask the question, will Allah forgive me? Who is Allah? Allah is Ar-Rahman. 
You know what Ar-Rahman means? Ar-Rahman, as بعض العلماء say, some of the scholars they say, صفة ذاتية. It's an attribute that gives the essence of God. Like, that is the essence of God. It's not just a صفة فعلية. It's not something God does. Like, God creates, right? God, this is part of his essence, his very essence. And this is why God says, قُلْ اِدْعُوا اللَّهَ أَوْ اِدْعُوا الرَّحْمَانَ أَيَّمْ مَا تَدْعُوا فَلَهُ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَى Call upon Allah, or call upon Ar-Rahman. As our teacher, as Sheikh Mukhtar always says, Ar-Rahman is like the lovingly merciful. It's not just mercy, it's, it's more than that, right? It's the lovingly merciful. It's part of his essence, subhana. And that mercy, as Imam al-Ghazali says, the loving mercy of God is not a result of an emotion or a feeling, as mercy is with you and I. It's not a result of an infi'al. You know, like, if I, I am merciful because I can be driven by empathy. I see something that uh, it's just difficult to see, right? I look at suffering for our brothers and sisters in Gaza, as an example. I mean, I'm from Gaza, my family's there. So you see the suffering, and it moves you, right? Like, but that movement is a result of what? Is a result of an emotion. God's loving mercy is not a result of his emotion. Which means, as Imam Ghazali says, it is tam, it is a complete mercy. Because it is a result of him knowing what's in your best interest. Not a result of something that moves him, because hasha, he's far from that. You know, exalted above any deficient emotions is God. Right, so it's a complete loving mercy. It's as though I am going to tell you, when you jump, you must fall down. This is a dumb example, sorry, but I'm, just, I'm trying to get, the, I'm trying to get the, the point across. Or a human being must eat. And you're like, okay, of course human beings eat. Of course God is merciful. That's, that's the whole point. And Allah wants to make that abundantly clear in the Qur'an. وَإِذَا جَاءَكَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِآيَاتِنَا فَقُلْ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ كَتَبَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ الرَّحْمَةِ أَنَّهُ مَنْ عَمِلَ مِنْكُمْ سُوءًا بِجَهَالَةٍ ثُمَّ تَابًا بَعْدِهِ وَأَصْلَحٍ فَإِنَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty says in the Qur'an, He says, and if those who believe in our verses come to you, tell them, salamu alaykum, peace be upon you. But then give him glad, new, give him glad tidings, say, He has prescribed upon Himself, He has made it incumbent upon His very essence, that He is lovingly merciful. Such that when any person, Allah continues, whoever amongst you, performs a sin in ignorance. And ignorance here doesn't mean a lack of knowledge. This is a misunderstanding of the concept of ilm to begin with. Ignorance here means in a moment in which my judgment was clouded by the things Imam Shahid was speaking about. Lust, hawa, all these other things. At that moment, at that moment where my judgment is clouded, if I make the sin, if I perform the sin, which we... I'll do during these moments, Allah says, whoever turns to Allah in repentance immediately afterwards, then know Allah is forgiving and merciful. So will Allah forgive us? Of course Allah will forgive you. Of course human beings eat. You get my point? Of course if you jump, you will fall. Of course. I mean, what, 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 what do you want me to say? Of course Allah Jalla will forgive. But that comes with conditions. Allah wants us, as the ulama say, and I will close on a couple things, is you return to Allah sincerely, you have regret. There's a difference between regret and these negative um, thinking cycles. I'm going to get to it in a second. But you have regret, you leave the sin, and you make an intention, a determination not to return to it. And you say, oh, Allah, forgive me. If it's a major sin, it has to be explicit. Ya Allah, I return to you. Ya Allah, forgive me for these things. And Allah will forgive you because he promises it and because it's in his very nature. From the t tips of tricks of shaitan, and I'll stop here, inshallah, it's the last thing I'll mention, is shaitan knows your nature and your nafs. He knows that if you start to get in these vicious cycles of thinking, I made a sin, I am nothing. So now first, I have these thoughts. I am nothing, I'm nothing, right? It's, this is not just regret. This is now beating yourself up. That leads to helplessness. It leads to negativity, which leads you to repeat the same thing again. It's the same behavioral pattern in any number of things. You can apply it to uh, uh, unhealthy eating habits. You can apply it to a whole number of other things. Shaitan knows this. So he comes to you and he says, you are so bad, you will never be forgiven. 
he starts to make you see Allah's nature through your own self. You see? The Messenger of God وسلم, trained his companions and the ulama, the scholars, trained us to break that from the very beginning. Both by introspection, mindfulness, muraqaba, call it what you will, but also by presenting your feelings and your thoughts to those that are better than you, those that can mentor you through it. Look at Hamdala, Hadith al Bukhari. Hamdala, as in Sayyidina ibn Mas'ud, no, no, Hadith in Sahih Muslim, Afwan. Hamdala, Sayyidina Hamdala, he goes in the streets and he screams, I am a hypocrite. Abu Bakr says, Why? Abu Bakr heard him. He's like, why are you saying I'm a hypocrite? He says, when I go to the messenger of God, I feel like I'm, the, I'm in the sky. But then I go back to my family and I smell my kids and my wife. Alhamdulillah, he's in a good relationship, which is good. But it's also a fitna. He says, I do all of this and I, I forget everything. Abu Bakr said, you know what? I feel the same way too. He, Abu Bakr didn't have this thought process. He didn't say, I'm a hypocrite. He said, let's go to the messenger of God. And the Messenger of God وسلم, smiled and he said, If you were consistent in this state, this hal, that you have with me in all times, the angels will come give you salam while you're laying down in your bed and when you're walking in the marketplace. But he said an hour and an hour. He stopped that, right? He stopped that thinking pattern. Another man came to the Messenger of God, and I close with this. And this hadith is in Sahih Bukhari, and Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu And he says, Ya Rasulullah, I kissed a woman, not his wife. Ya Rasulullah, I kissed a woman. So the Messenger of God said, you did? He said, yes. Allah immediately sent down verses in the Quran. Allah immediately sent verses in Surah Hud. وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ طَرَفَيِ النَّهَارِ وَزُلَفًا مِنَ اللَّيْلِ إِنَّ الْحَسَنَاتِ يُذْهِبْنَ السَّيِّئَاتِ ذَلِكَ ذِكْرَى لِلذَّاكِرِينَ He says, establish the prayer, perfect the prayer. In the two meanings of uh, iqabat, salah. Um, in the two uh, edges of the day, meaning in the morning and Salat al-Asr, Fajr and asr and at night, meaning Maghrib and Isha. For indeed, good deeds erase the bad deeds. That is a reminder for those that are reminded, that those that think. So the man was so happy. The cycle was broken. And he said, Messenger of God, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is this for me? He said, no, this is for the whole Ummah. This is for the whole Ummah. So brothers and sisters, in conclusion, will Allah forgive you? Of course He will. But you need to have a relationship with Allah that's based on Allah. Because the, what, the, the, the essence of our relationship with Him is He is Lord and I am slave. He is Lord and I am what? It's a relationship of ubudiyah, of servitude. And when I understand that, I understand why Allah loves to be called. It's not to answer you. It's because he recognizes that you recognize that you are a servant, you're a slave. And when you recognize this, you start to see Allah as Allah described for us. And you'll recognize, of course, Allah is merciful. Not only would you recognize that, it will prevent you, inshallah, with time and practice from doing the things that are displeasing to Allah because you recognize that you are a servant. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to forgive us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.